With me here in New York is MSNBC contributor Joy Reid, who's the managing editor of thegrio.com, and in Philadelphia, Lehigh University professor James Peterson, also a contributor to, to the Grio. Joy, uh, in the call for an assault weapons ban, one argument being used is that of 12,664 homicides in the United States last year, only 323 involved the use of a rifle. So I guess that's case argued, is it? That's yeah, fine. That we like, don't need to ban assault weapons. Of course. That sounds like the argument on the right that this is just the price of freedom. You know, I don't think anybody can look at those pictures that you showed earlier of those little kids, of that teacher, that young teacher in her 20s, and say that that is an appropriate price of freedom. And by the way, when you look at the other kinds of deaths that happen, the gang-related deaths, oh, those are with assault weapons. The people who are sweeping a street with 30 and 100 rounds of ammunition and then killing a two-year-old in the crossfire. That would be these same kinds of weapons. What normal, rational person needs to be able to fire off a hundred rounds at a clip? I don't think you shoot deer that way. So I think if we just apply our logic, and then this other idea that, well, we can't confiscate them, or not confiscate, but we can't eliminate them because it's just too hard. They're too well, many. There are 300 million firearms There's is so the many. argument, and therefore we can't control them. Can't do anything. Well, you know what? Then that means that American exceptionalism is bunk, because Australia did it. Australia instituted a very stringent assault weapons ban and Indeed. saw their murder rate go down something like 14 times. If the Aussies can do it, we can do it. Wow. Professor Peterson, can you educate me, because I am a foreigner from a strange land, why do three million Americans feel the need to have a fearsome killing machine like the AR-15, even though it doesn't have a grenade launcher attached to it, why would such a weapon be legally available for sale online at your local sports shop? I think there's two things to consider here, and I don't know if this education is going to help you understand why America is the way it is. But, but number one, we've talked a little bit about the culture of violence in America, which, which thinks about films and thinks about how masculinity is constructed and thinks about video games and things of that nature. But we haven't talked too much about the culture of fear in America, which is there's a lot of sort of um, um, commercial um, uh, efforts around the intersections of, of fear and purchasing guns or fear and purchasing things like duct tape and things of that nature. So we're very, very good at advertising and promoting fear in this country. And one of the responses to that is, is, is consuming guns. And that's why you see the uptake in the consumption of guns around the election of this president, um, around any kind of discussions of, of policy efforts to, to control guns or to move into a, a realm of, of uh, common sense gun safety. And, and, and the response is people buy, buy a whole lot of guns. And so, so this, Professor, this... You, you, you seem to be defining this as some kind of irrational panic mechanism. Is that what you're saying? It's not, it's, not, it's, it's not irrational if you, if you think about how people are driven to consume based upon fear. Sometimes this is about race. It's fear of, like, people invading or coming into your community or coming into your, uh, uh, into your neighborhood or into your home. Sometimes it's fear about other things, like fear of a government. The government's too overblown or the government's going to come in and do this and take away all your freedoms. And, again, if you, if you map this, Martin you'll see the areas that are more susceptible to this kind of fear-mongering. But we talk about it a lot on this show. We don't talk about the consumption of guns as a response to it, but that is one of the responses to the culture wow. of fear in America. Joy, I, I'd like you and Professor Peterson to listen to the great Rick Perry, who has offered his considered views uh, in a report in Texas. Listen to this to have access to, uh, to weapons in, in their school. And, and that, I would suggest... The crowd erupted in applause when Governor Perry even alluded to arming Texas teachers. Is that the answer? You know, Martin, teachers are expected to be, in a lot of cases, surrogate parents. They're buying school supplies for kids who don't have them. They're helping kids who don't have money for school lunches. In a lot of cases, they are almost a de facto babysitter. Teachers have so much that they are required to do. Are we now saying that they have to be de facto law enforcement in their classrooms? Do we want to have a gun locker in every class? Do we want to have a gun available that a child can get their hands on it? I mean, what kind of a society do people like Rick Perry want us to live in? We have chosen to live here, not but in Rick war Perry's towards... Rick Perry's all about freedom. Right. Well, he... Live free and die is what he says. It sounds like a very... Uh... Mogadishu type of freedom. It seems like they want to almost live in a lawless, you know, wild west sort of world where everyone for themselves and everyone is shooting. The crossfire could kill so many people. I mean, the idea of sending your children to what amounts to an armed camp rather yes. than to school yes. is insane. 
Professor Peterson, you, you work on campus every day. You teach students in lecture theatres. You hold tutorials. Do you agree that the lesson of Friday's shooting is that educators like you, like you, should be given clearance to carry a firearm? Absolutely not. And I also work with public school teachers in Philadelphia and Pittsburgh and Chicago in some of the most challenged areas of this nation. And not one of the teachers that I work with, and they face these threats on a daily basis, not one of the teachers that I work with would advocate something like this. And listen, this is so disgusting to me, because not only does it distract from what we really need to be talking about, the real issues about common sense, gun safety, about mental health, about the culture of violence, but every time you hear someone on any television screen saying that we should be purchasing more guns in response to this, to me, they're just in bed with the NRA. To me, they're just aligned with the leadership of the NRA, which is really in bed with the gun lobby, a very, very highly resourced lobby that controls too many of our politicians at the state level and at the national level. And I'm sorry, but Governor Rick Perry has, has unveiled himself as being a part of that lobby today. And by the way, Martin, what an insult to professional exactly. law enforcers. What an insult to our men and women in the military who train and put their lives on the line to conduct actual uh, you know, security, who protect right. our freedoms and who are well trained to do it, to say any old person could be able to pull out a gun and do what they do. No, you know what? That's not true. And ask somebody in the military. Ask. I have a lot of friends that are police officers. Ask them how it feels to have to use your gun. Ask what that does to them psychologically, emotionally, exactly. to have to use their gun. Ask how hard it is to kill another human being, to say that any teacher should now prepare themselves mentally, emotionally, and psychologically to kill at any moment. What kind of people do they think we are? I think we've had confirmation that Rick Perry is really without much thought. Joy Reid and Professor James Peterson, thank you both.